Hi there, a very warm welcome to the channel. When it comes to cooking and experimenting, I really enjoy taking a classic dish from another country and either doing it justice or completely ruining it. Today I'm taking an absolute classic dish from my cousins from across the big pond. Of course, that is the United States. I'm bringing you today the ultimate in comfort food, that is the Salisbury steak. I'm going to tweak the dish just a little this time and if there are any Americans watching do go easy on me and of course if there are any tips you'd like to share with me on how I can improve my Salisbury steak recipe do comment below right what are we waiting for let's go and cook it right let's get started as always with all my videos a full list of the ingredients will be posted on the video description so firstly, we'll go in with some panko breadcrumbs. If you haven't got panko breadcrumbs, just toast some bread up at similar weight, maybe a little bit less and just crumble them in. Here we have uh, one small onion and we'll get a box grater and grate that in with a mix. So just get your coarse grater, the coarse part of your grater rather, and grate it away. And all at the same time, try not to cry like I am almost doing. Now we'll use our fingers to give that a little bit of a mix up and combine it. And we'll leave that to soak for a couple of minutes just before we uh, add the rest of our ingredients. Okay, they've been um, soaking for a little minute. We're going to go in with some um, ground beef or minced beef, whatever you want to call it. One well actually two garlic cloves, because mine was small. You can either grate them or use a garlic crusher, whatever you have, or finely chop them, whatever you prefer. One egg, crack, crack, and she pops. Now we don't have to be really precise with this. Um, it's two tablespoons of ketchup. I'm just gonna wing it, that'll do. Now in the UK we call these OXO cubes typically, but uh, you can call it a bullion cube, whatever you want. Now because we're adding this, these are very salty, so if you watch a lot of my videos, I use, I always season things, but we're going to hold off on the salt with this mixture. And uh, this is a, from a county in the UK actually, Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce, so we need about half a teaspoon, so let's just for it Ailey, who cares? And three teaspoons of French Dijon mustard. If you use English mustard, just be careful, just put about a teaspoon in because it will be too hot. It wouldn't really work. I'll do. Now like I said, I'm gonna hold off on the salt, but uh, always go in for that black pepper. Give it about half a teaspoon's worth of gram black pepper. Now let's get stuck in and give that a good old mix up, get it all combined. And it's the same as making burger patties. It's similar to a burger patty this, but obviously you've got the breadcrumbs and, and everything else in it. And the more you get this combined and work it, uh, the better your patties will stay and hold firm and not break up when you try and fry them. So let's just work this for about two or three minutes. Okay, you may have noticed that the light has changed and I don't sound as congested because I've gotten over my man flu. I've had to refilm this from this point from, because as after I carried on, I had a bit of a technical glitch and, and I lost the rest of the film. So conditions are slightly different, but I've still got the same mix and it's now ready to divide into four or five pieces and then we'll form the patties. Right, I have my uh, five at similar size balls and all we're going to do is just flatten that so it's like you're making a burger patty get it quite flat because if they're too thick they take longer to cook that's 
which one's a little tiny little bit smaller so we'll put them in the fridge to firm up for about 10 minutes let's go on with a large skillet and we'll go into that with running low on oil I need to refill this about a tablespoon and a half of oil we're going to get some oil off those patties that we've made and we'll heat this to a high heat before we add our patties make sure that pan is hot if it's too cold your patties will break up and we don't want that our pan is now hot to touch i'm not sure whether these five patties will fit in this pan we'll see a little bit of noise as it goes in and that's what you're looking for no pan noise take your patties back out and wait until your pan gets a bit hotter if you put these in a cold pan it's not going to work i think they're just going to fit i'm being a bit naughty pan crowding i'd rather not do this but on this occasion what i'm going to do is just pop that one out and i'll cook that on its own when i've done these so if you have to batch cook these as i'm now officially doing don't crowd your pan we'll do these cook these now for about a minute and a half per side a minute is up we'll now flip these over we should have a nice little bit of color as we have I like a little bit more than that but hey we'll get some color more color the other side on the presentation side These have been cooking for a minute and a half aside now. I'm going to carefully remove them. They've got good colour. That's exactly what we're looking for. And those will finish cooking in our lovely gravy. It is important that you let this pan cool a little bit. I've now dropped it to a medium heat. Going to just put a little dash more oil in and we'll add that pre-chopped small onion along with two crushed or minced garlic cloves if you get this add this to a pan that is too hot your garlic will just instantly burn and it'll make your sauce taste not nice little touches like these where you get better results nice medium pan and we'll cook this off for about two minutes constantly stirring you can't leave it see you in a minute now we'll go in with those mushrooms which we uh, chopped earlier in prep for our gravy and we'll cook these off for another two minutes. Okay, two minutes are up. Now it's time to add two tablespoons, if you've got it, unsalted butter. Because the gravy is quite salty anyway. So if you've got unsalted butter, add that. If not, salted butter will have to do. Now I'm just going to slowly melt this. Again, continuously stirring. It's making a bit of a roux thickener, or the beginning of one. And I will add three tablespoons of plain flour. Let's mix that. all this at once because it makes it easier to make your sauce and keep the lumps out more importantly I mean this gravy is taking shape already put my heat up now to me just to, towards medium height looking good it smells delicious it's looking pretty much lump free there might be a little bit knocking about but hey i'll 
look at that gravy I need it to come up to a simmer so just gradually increase your heat the rest of the beef stock they're looking good Bring this up to a simmer, like I said. We are up to a simmer. 125 ml or half a cup of water. It's the rest of the gravy ingredients. Some more of that lovely Worcestershire sauce. About half a teaspoon. And some more Dijon mustard. About two good dollops in there. black pepper again avoid the salt if you can Just, uh, get all them ingredients to make friends and as it comes up to a simmer we will add our resting Salisbury steaks being careful not to break them up because mine are look like I really want to break up we're going to finish these off in this delicious mushroom sauce so really they are just fancy burgers in gravy but trust me these are amazing the ultimate in comfort food I mean waiting for the autumn to drop in so I can cook these and get them on the channel so we'll let this simmer and let that sauce thicken for a about five minutes constantly basting and getting those patties cooked and up to temperature I've now been simmering these for about seven eight minutes you can simmer these anything up to ten minutes not for overly long much longer than that because the patties will dry out and overcook I'll just look at this um, if only YouTube did smells honestly so let's get these to a plate and see how these look right we're on a plate all that's left to do is go over with some of that delicious well all of it if you want mushroom beef gravy with Dijon mustard smells absolutely delicious and that is a Brit guys version of the classic American Salisbury steak if you're British Malaysian Australian or from anywhere else in the world you might even be an American who's yet to try this dish if you haven't, I urge you to give it a go. You won't be disappointed. If you consider subscribing to my channel, I really would appreciate it. And if you do, click that notification bell so you're notified each and every time I upload a new video. If you'd like to see me attempt to try and cook or ruin a dish from your country, do comment below. I'll definitely try and give it a go. But for now, keep safe, take care, and I'll see you next time.